Hello, good morning, everyone, and welcome. And welcome to the first day one of one of the first ever 12 Days of Chocolatey. We're so happy that you could join us here with us. Um, I'm Adil Ligari here at Chocolatey. We are the Windows automation experts. Uh, happy to have you here. Um, you know, hopefully we'll have you here over the next 12 days. Um, this is a really cool event and just real talk, you know, 2020 has been a hard year for a lot of folks to say that is sort of an understatement. And we really wanted to end the year on a positive note. So um, if you if you join us here on the 12 days and, and you stay with me here, um, we're going to have um, great talks, you know, good content, a um, lot of discussion, uh, you know, hop in the chat, please. You know, we'll try and be as interactive as possible. Um, we'll have some cool new features and announcements as well over the next 12 days. Uh, in addition to that, if you're paying attention, we do have prizes. So there will be registration going on in the middle um, where you can log in and and, and check out um, different things. So we'll, we'll throw up a form at a certain point and uh, you can answer a couple of questions there to kind of make it more uh, interactive for you. But feel free to shout, shout out to us in the chat. We have some of the chocolatey team here with me here. Um, it's not just me, it's the whole, whole team of us. So um, we have the 12 days of events. Um, I'm not gonna go into too much of the details of the logistics, but we'll, we'll sort of go through it throughout the day and and we'll kind of sync up after, uh, after the talk here. But the bulk of these events is gonna be a talk or a discussion or a webinar or a Q&A. Uh, and, and then the rest of it, we're gonna try and get as interactive as we can. So if we can get questions from you, great. We're gonna post some uh, like um, question forms ahead of time just so you, we can we can interact with you a bit more. But um, but yeah, it's, so so hopefully it, it's a fun event and hopefully uh, you know you join in and you can win some prizes along the way. So there will be 12 days of giveaways. So, so, so stay tuned for that for sure. We're happy to have you here. Um, and so, without further ado, I, I do want to I do want to bring up uh, the speaker of the day. So, our founder and our CEO, uh, the guy that wrote the thing in the first place, Rob Reynolds. Um, so, I'm going to throw over to you, Rob. Are you ready? Good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening wherever in the world you are tuning in from. My name is Rob. I founded Chocolatey Software a few years ago. Can we hear me okay? It looks like it. Perfect. Yes. All right. So I'm going to keep going. All right. Let me get on the right thing here. Okay, there we go. Uh, so we're talking about the power simple. This is the power simple. Simple breeds consistency. It's possible to create a solution to a problem, sometimes even easy, the real work is in simplifying that down. This is my favorite slide or favorite saying, simple ain't easy, right? This quote by Thelonious Monk really captures the essence of achieving simple and forms the basis for what we'll talk about here today. Have you ever looked at a problem and found a solution that worked, but it felt like it was too much? Uh, you know, maybe it was uh, fragile or easily broken. Uh, maybe, uh, it, you had all these things that you were doing and you thought maybe I could go back, right? And so maybe you were able to come back to it later and find a much simpler way to do the same thing. If you haven't done that, that's okay. That work of reworking a solution until you find the simplest way is really capturing the essence of what we do here at Chocolatey. In a way, this event, the 12 Days of Chocolatey, uh, is kind of a way of, uh, you know, bringing that, that simple uh, to you. It's kind of a way to reintroduce chocolate to a lot of you. Uh, for a few of you, this may be a refresher, but for many of you, this will be an awakening. Today and over the next 12 days, your eyes will be open to the achievable. And what you learn, what you can do with Windows, you'll never go back to your previous practices. You see, these things we teach at Chocolatey are not just ideas or theories, but experiences, right? We have real world experience. We've helped thousands of folks just like you see a new way of doing things. And we've helped them achieve what they once thought was impossible, magical even, right? Thousands of folks who are in your shoes at one point. You may be wondering if, if we can help you as well. You may say, but Rob, I'm just one person. What can I change in my organization? And I'm telling you, you are enough. All it takes is one person to make a difference. At Chocolatey, one of our core values is strive for simple. 
We strive for simplicity and common sense in a world where complexity is the norm. A world where common sense is not common practice. And for Claire, yes, I am talking about Windows. We achieve simplicity, common sense, and patterns. And we're bringing back elements of these things uh, here with a chocolatey way. Uh, to achieve simplicity, you need to you kind of get above it all and see pictures and patterns of what is there. Uh, I don't know how many of you, uh, when you come across a pile of laundry, you start to make sense of it. You start to move the socks into one area. You start to move the shirts to another area. And you're starting to build those patterns. Or you go to a sink that's full of dishes. And you start to kind of get those dishes kind of into a, the patterns and stuff. That's kind of making sense of that chaos. And that's kind of what I'm talking about here, right? So to achieve that simplicity, you've got to get above it all and be able to see pictures and patterns of what's there. Only then can you really start to categorize and make sense of that chaos, find order in that chaos. At Chocolatey, we found order in the chaos of Windows. No, it's true. Stay with me for a moment here. I know you're thinking, but software management in Windows, it's kind of like the Wild West. And I'm telling you, if you listen and you submit yourself to the practices of the Chocolatey way, I know you'll be successful. I know you'll be a better person. And I know you'll achieve what you once thought was impossible. You see, simple brings consistency. Simple allows focus. Simple is powerful. Does anyone recognize this? Raise your hand. Right, right, yep. Yeah, that's an iPhone, right? First generation iPhone, in fact. It said that the iPhone revolutioned the way we use our phones and, and revolutioned it quite a bit. Uh, when Apple introduced the iPhone in 2007. Uh, was it a new concept with smartphones, uh, a new thing? Was Apple the first to market with a smartphone? No, no, they weren't. It was a, we had Palms, uh, we had Blackberries, and, and Microsoft actually had uh, smartphones on the market. In fact, I had one of those HTC phones that uh, you, you kind of slid it. Uh, it was like a candy bar format. You slid it, and it had a keyboard in there. I thought it was the greatest thing since sliced bread, of course. Uh, so th this was not a new concept. Uh, these, these smartphones were not new. Uh, anyone recognize this? Uh, that's, that's a Palm Trio, right? So you remember, if you go back with me to 2005, 2006, I know for some of you that you might be a little too young, but everyone was talking about the Trio killer. What's the next thing? What's the thing that's going to come out and kill the Trio? Uh, because the Trio was this... Uh, gadget that uh, was basically that, that first concept of, of really a smartphone that kind of did things kind of well. Uh, and, you know, you were able to use it as a phone and it had all those other apps as well. Um, and so what uh, happened was the iPhone came out and it completely changed the way people use their phones, right? We're talking a, a phone. Uh, this iPhone is something that, that people really, they use in place of a computer. Uh, in some places, that's all they have. They have a mobile phone, and that is that serves as their computer. And so uh, that, uh, as a revolution, it's really kind of changed that. You know, where you have a laptop or a desktop machine, those are uh, places where you can consume information. You're also a producer and a creator with those types of things. iPhone has led to a more of a consumption generation, right? We're consuming information and applications uh, with that. Speaking of Apple, you probably recognize this, right? Uh, so that's not a Newton. Uh, if you were old enough to remember uh, the Apple Newton, well, I was in high school. I myself did not have an Apple Newton. One of my teachers did. Now, the Newton was something in what we call the, the personal digital assistant, right, or the PDA category. And that's where many of these devices started, right? Uh, again, Apple came out with uh, this, this tablet here long after other companies did. Uh, Microsoft actually introduced uh, the concept of the tablet PC in 2001, came out with a device, I think with Hewlett Packard in 2003, and uh, it, uh, it, 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 that uh, tablet PC, we can, I guess we can safely say that was uh, a failure. It didn't, it didn't work out like they'd hoped. Maybe they were a little before their time, um, but you know, maybe, maybe not. Maybe there was something else at play. And, and when Apple came out with this iPad in 2010, it was tremendously successful. Right? Tremendously successful. And it's been out for, for 20 years. And you know, some might say that, that Apple has a, a much better marketing strategy. And while I agree that was likely true at the time, I think there's, a, there's something deeper at play. Right? Apple is tremendously great at user experience. Like them or not, they do very well on making a product that is easy to use, is simple to use. Right? They spent considerable time on making the product 
easy to learn and use. They made it so simple, right, that very young kids, sometimes as young as, as even two, two to three years old, can intuitively pick up and use an iPad, right? And so if you look at this, right, it's one button. Uh, you got a touchscreen interface is quite intu intuitive, right? So these designs, these intuitive designs are simple, right? And so uh, if we look at this and, and you're looking at, look at all those buttons all over the place, right? So you, it really takes a lot of thought to, to kind of figure out how to use this. This one button, right? And so the new ones they have coming out, the new uh, iPads, you, you now have these, these things with face ID. They don't even have a button, right, uh, on the main part of the screen. They'll have a button. So they've actually went back and they've, they've refined their design some and, and thought about how they could make it even simpler. And uh, don't be deceived, right? Uh, and Apple makes it look effort, effortless. Uh, and to achieve that simplicity, that's, that takes a lot of work. When it's elegant and it's simple to use, uh, as I said, it, it appears effortless, but don't be deceived. The effort of making something simple is quite a bit of work. Simple ain't easy, right? It requires creating something and refining it again and again. Then asking yourself if it's simple enough yet and refining it again. And then you put that into people's hands and you let them use it. And then you continue to refine it even more, right? And so uh, what's really interesting is that uh, Steve Jobs, uh, in his biography uh, about the, de the, the designs of these devices, the iPads and the iPhones, uh, he had said that it was so simple, a child could use it. And what's really interesting here, I've never read Steve Jobs' biography. I've never really researched work. Uh, however, as I dug in and I researched for this, this, uh, this presentation, this talk, I realized that we both have similar thoughts on simplicity and have, have come to very similar conclusions about it. Right, so here's his quote on simple, is that it can be harder uh, than complex and you have to work hard to get your thinking clean. I'm not going to read all of it. Um, so what he's saying in, in so many words there is, is this, simple ain't easy, but it's totally worth it. Right? Here's a company uh, that has sold two billion devices uh, uh, of just uh, the, the iPhone, billions and billions of other uh, you know, things with the, the iPhone. Uh, I'm sure the iPad has had billions as well but has sold you know, tremendously. And uh, as we look at that and uh, we think about that, so when it comes to product design, user experience, we see simple is not only important, it's an essential requirement for the longer term. Products that, uh, that have great simple design stand the test of time, right? Can simple work in other areas? Well, what about the world of business? Uh, surely we don't need simplicity of here, right? We don't need simplicity in business, do we? Now, how many of you have read the book, Jim Collins, Good to Great? I have, it's great. Uh, it's a little slow to start, but it picks up quite quickly. In that book, he talks about a lot of concepts. And one of those is called the hedgehog concept. And uh, is anybody familiar with the hedgehog concept? Basically, Jim says there, there's two types of thinking, right? There's the fox and the hedgehog. And the fox crafts all kinds of cunning ways to try to catch the hedgehog trying a new plan every day, sometimes, you know, multiple times a day. And each time the fox's plans are foiled, right? The hedgehog sees the fox coming, curls up into a simple ball with pointy spikes, and the fox loses over and over again. The hedgehog does one thing very simply and really well. Now, when I think of a fox, I kind of think of this. And uh, for those of you that uh, don't know what this is, uh, this contraption is a Rube Goldberg machine, right? Typically, uh, it's a very complex set of uh, events, uh, things that can occur uh, to perform a very, very simple task, right? And so here we have uh, a bowling ball, uh, we have uh, a pin, we have uh, some other things. And what's it doing at the end? It's, it's turning a switch on or off, right? Where, you know, when we think about simple, uh, you think about just walking up and, and flipping a switch on or off, right? And so you look at that and it looks absurd. And of course it is. It's a Rube Goldberg machine. It's very absurd. And so that's, that's kind of a, a, an overarching example, maybe uh, too far. So we don't think about that uh, when we think about complexity and, and how foxes love that complexity, but uh, that's kind of that extreme case. Uh, but there is complexity in, in all areas. And foxes, they, they love complexity. They do. Uh, they love making complex things, sometimes more complex than others can understand. Right? And some of you are looking at your coworkers now thinking, you know, I, I know a few foxes. I, and it might even be you. 
and that's, that's okay. If you're a fox, uh, the world does need foxes. Uh, I'm not trying to, to get you down. I'm just saying that when we're thinking about simplifying, uh, foxes love complexity. Hedgehogs, on the other hand, are the simplifiers. Foxes are the complicators. Hedgehogs are the simplifiers. So hedgehogs, in contrast, they look at complexities, and they look at all the complexities in the world, and they start working to simplify it. So they look at one big idea uh, that they think they can make a difference in, that they're the best at, and then they focus on that simplifying it down to a fundamental thing, a fundamental, simple idea. And Jill goes, oh, sorry, Jim goes on to state in the Good to Great book that in the world of leadership and businesses, right, in the, in the, in the, the world of leadership and business, that uh, between foxes and hedgehogs, hedgehogs win. In fact, it's required to be considered one of the good to great businesses that his research team looked over in their years of study uh, that they did that it resulted again in this, this book. Uh, and those that, that simplify are the ones that do the best and survive long term. So the power of simple comes out in business and leadership as well as in product design. Uh, so are there other areas? Uh, surely, you know, uh, what about money, right? Uh, I want to be a millionaire. I'm not, uh, let's be clear on that. Do you want to be a millionaire? I mean, I do. Uh, surely that has to have a complex strategy and we got to you know, invest in, in, in certain things and we have to have real complex ways about going about that. Uh, well, uh, in a study of uh, you know, over 10,000 real life millionaires, uh, real life millionaires uh, by Chris Hogan. And by the way, this is Chris Hogan. Uh, we got to meet Mr. Hogan at a conference this last year. He's a super nice and uh, very inspiring individual. And in Chris's book, uh, Everyday Millionaires, uh, they, again, they surveyed over 10,000 actual millionaires, right? And they found that over 75% of these millionaires became millionaires simply by being consistent. They were consistently investing in a company offered retirement plans, such as a 401k uh, or into an IRA or Roth, uh, or, you know, of course, whatever other countries do, but this was in the US, over a few decades, right? They did a couple of other things as well, uh, but what really built them wealth was simply their behaviors. They were consistent. And so most folks who are smart with their money, they don't invest in things they don't understand. And it's really easy uh, to understand uh, a 401k and how it can get you there, right? As Dave Ramsey says, you know, if you invest in things you don't understand, that's a really good way to lose your shirt, right? Now, uh, I'm not a, a financial expert by any means, right? So this may not apply in every situation. I'm sure there are other methods uh, to making money that are very complex or, or whatever. So please don't sacrifice me in the comments. What I'm presenting is that simple behaviors, simple and consistent behaviors made the bulk of folks like you and me, like the, every, the every person, right? Made us into millionaires over their careers, right? So I'm just giving you a, a simple strategy. Uh, simple does not mean easy. It does not mean it's easy, just that it works. And basically spend less than you make, and save 15% of your income for retirement. Works every time. So we've seen the power of simple in product design. We've seen it in business. We see it in money. What about food? Oh, ooh, that hurts, right? Now it's trying to bring this a little closer to home. Food. What about food? Is there uh, power in simple with food, right? And, and as we think about this, uh, you know, because you know, a lot of us are, or some of us might be eating lunch or getting ready to eat lunch uh, or dinner, you know, depending on where in the world you're, you're tuning in from, is that, you know, like it or not, the, what we choose to put in our mouths, in our bodies, uh, has consequences, right? A lot of us just shove food in as fuel without always considering the ramifications that, that, that the food has over us. Uh, and they do. Our food choices, they have power. Have you ever ate a donut or something with high sugar and starches and then you're kind of lethargic when the sugar rush wore off, you got really tired? Uh, or, you know, you went out to lunch, uh, you know, with your uh, uh, coworkers or whatever, and you, you ate a big lunch, probably more than you should have uh, because there was a buffet, right? It was a buffet. You had to get your money's worth. So you eat everything, right? And so then you, you come back to work and, and you're about two o'clock. You just start to get tired. Like you're ready to take a nap. Uh, and so that you get to a that period of, of a low productivity. And we've all been there. So maybe, uh, you know, maybe some of us were able to go, okay, that was because of that. And uh, hopefully all of you are able to draw that conclusion. Uh, but there is a way, of course, if you break that cycle, you make different choices, right, with the, the foods that you choose to put in. That way you don't have low periods of, uh, I'm sorry, periods of low productivity. Now, some of you, 
uh, you have that great body type where you can just put everything in your body and you don't have to care about weight gain uh, or any of that. And some of you may know some people who fall in this category. I sure do. Uh, now, hint, it's not me. I am definitely not one of those types. I have to work really hard to uh, you know, stay fit, stay active, and all of that. Now, however, for many of us, right, uh, when we prefer uh, simpler and natural ingredients, it has a much better effect on us. So uh, let's say for the purpose of illustration, uh, on simple versus complex. As uh, uh, complex foods have a lot of processing, you know, uh, they're processed. Uh, they have a lot of ingredients, a lot of different things. Where, uh, in contrast, and, and so that's this uh, this hamburger with these fries. That would be a, a concept of something that's very complex uh, type of food stuff that we would put in our body. And down in the bottom right corner, we have uh, you know, uh, chicken breast, and it looks like green beans with some. Uh, peppers, right? And so, and that, uh, that natural, simple and natural thing down in the, the bottom corners was really what uh, the hope is. That's the thing when you're looking at simple, um, you're going to choose to put that in your body uh, over the other thing. And so when you do choose simple over the processed foods, the effect can be that you don't crash and burn and you're able to stay productive all day. And your mood uh, is actually affected by this. Well, it could be much better. And of course, with that comes exercise, you know, move more, eat less, or, or something like that. Um, and I'm sure we can apply simple to that as well. Uh, and so at this point, uh, you may be asking yourself, so we've talked about product design, we've talked about leadership and business and money and food, and we've touched on exercise and all of this in the name of simple, but you know, what does this have to do with the product? Uh, what does this have to do with chocolatey? Uh, and so basically, uh, this is simply illustrating that simple is important in all areas of our lives. And we can dive into other areas um, but let's kind of move back into technology. And it, as an organization, as, as a chocolate, you know, of course we do have products at the end of the day, but what we care about is uh, the person, you know, the, the person on the other end, we want to make sure that you're healthy and you're happy and that, you know, things are going well and we're giving you good tools that are actually going to make you, uh, you know, a better person. Maybe you get your raises and all those other things. Um, that's kind of the, the idea when we talk about simple and we talk about what chocolate brings to the table, right? And so now, as uh, we think about technology in Simple, uh, when you make something more complex, it typically means more moving parts, right? And more moving parts can mean more points of failure, right? Uh, and you know, maybe it's harder for other folks to pick up. Right? But Simple, in contrast, it looks to remove those points of failure. So uh, I guess a, a really contrived example is to say, you know, if I have uh, some sort of uh, thing, a, a logic flow I'm going through, and it actually, you know, makes a couple of choices. Should I do this or should I do this? And let's say there's three of those choices that it goes through. If we are trying to simplify that, we would look to say, can we eliminate one of these choices? Let's just make it two choices. Can we combine something so that they come in and they do the same thing? Or is there a way we can simplify it from the outside so that when it comes in, there doesn't have to be any choices, right? So that's kind of this concept of, of applying that to technology as well. Uh, and that's, again, it's very contrived. There's uh, definitely other areas. And so simple in contrast, uh, we're looking to remove points of failure. We're looking to, to do, uh, do the same thing with, with basically less code sometimes. And in striving for simple, it doesn't always mean you could remove all those complexities. You just you strive to do so. Uh, and that's always uh, constantly with us. We're, we're always uh, kind of looking at our things and trying to make them simpler and simpler to use. Uh, a simpler design really allows for less moving parts, uh, less points of failure. Uh, now, the easier we can make ourselves th things for ourselves and others, right? It makes it easier for, for those to pick up and, and learn quicker. Now, when we think of simple, a lot of times we're thinking about the UX side of that. There's also that side where, where of course, folks have to uh, you know, maintain or, or work on the, the, that software as well. And we like, you know, software is written for humans, right? Uh, <laughs> and so they have to be able to read that. Now, uh, a really interesting example is uh, at one point uh, I worked on a tool called Roundhouse, and uh, we were trying to figure out how to make it uh, uh, the concept of you should be able to version your database, right? Uh, and that concept was completely unheard of uh, for uh, some folks. Like you know, if you were ever uh, asked them, you know, of course you put some software into production. What version is on? You know, they know what version that's on. But when you said what version is your database on, they just you kind of get a blank stare. And so as we were trying to think of you know, what makes the best concept of a version, 
uh, we spent two months not writing any code. So this is just thinking about things before the code got written. Spent two months thinking about this. And finally, it came to me. It was like, you know what? We're putting this stuff into to source control just like we do our other stuff. We should version the database the same way that we version the code. And so that when uh, I put some uh, stuff into production, because, you know, of course, the database stuff is also uh, also code, of, cell, uh, of course. And uh, when it goes into production, it has a version of that. And so those two things should be in sync with their versioning. And so that uh, example of finding simple uh, took a lot of thinking. And once it was there, it was obvious. It was like, yeah, that's exactly what it should do. That just makes sense. But it didn't uh, until that, uh, it was like the light bulb clicked on. It didn't make any sense. And so when it comes uh, 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 chocolatey, right, you've been told that, of course, software management is complex. I'm going you've probably experienced some of that. And some of you might have even contributed to the crazy, right? In the world of the Windows software ecosystem, it can feel like the inmates are running the asylum, right? When you're uh, out there and you have all of these different uh, installers and they do weird things. And we like to say every installer is a special snowflake. And some of those snowflakes are much more special than others, right? It's, it gets to be kind of a, a very strange area. And so when uh, where Chocolatey comes in, and a lot of you, you've experienced what Chocolatey can do when it makes sense of that chaos and it puts this nice, uh, um, I don't know if wrapper's the right word, but something uh, over the top of that. And it, it basically allows us to, to kind of control that chaos, corral it, uh, and then put building blocks on that so we can make sense of that and so we can put order and stuff on the side where you are managing that software. Right? And that's where you know, many of you have actually experienced the power of simple with chocolatey. And you've learned uh, those patterns and the building blocks of packages. And that experience uh, has made you better, right? Made you aware that, of course, simple automation is achievable on Windows. And, and that experience, uh, I like to say, is you know, a, a man with experience, not at the mercy of a man with an opinion. So those of you that have seen uh, what chocolate can do, uh, you're not out to listen to people that, that don't also have that experience as well. And so. Uh, this is my vision for Chocolatey, is that we share uh, the message of simple automation strategies to every technologist in the world. And having many of you with us uh, today uh, has allowed us to get you started down a simple yet powerful path on the Chocolatey way. Uh, so uh, this, uh, thank you. So this is uh, the end of the keynote. We're actually gonna talk about a couple of other things. So I'm gonna be joined back by um, a deal in a moment, and we're going to uh, continue. And if not, uh, there he is. Hello. Share my screen. Surprise. I was here the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> I was just looking at the chat comments and then trying to, uh, um, you know, uh, reply back. Sorry, folks. I know that sometimes when I re respond to one person on one platform, it doesn't always show up on all the different platforms. So if you see some chat messages that are out of context, it's because somebody on Facebook or YouTube or Twitch or one of the other platforms has responded as well. So uh, apologies if that's a little confusing, but uh, just trying to just trying to uh, uh, re respond back to folks. Thanks. Thanks so much, Rob, for, for that um, for that great keynote. It's a great way to start. And it very much is our philosophy here at Chocolatey, the power of simple, right? keeping things mm -hmm. simple. I, I like to say from that angle that, um, you know, a lot of times when we work with customers on demos with larger organizations and enterprises, um, the, the, re the real challenge is um, complexity is never hard. <laughs> complexity is easy to get to. To make the complex simple is actually quite a hard task. And so I find a lot of what we do in our tooling is built around is trying to simplify that process. So so it's really apropos to, to, to what we do here and sort of a, a good credo. We take it to heart. So that was very well done, Rob. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks. Hey, Adil. Mm -hmm. uh, so I, I had somebody ask. They were they were looking for some information, and uh, they wanted to know. Uh, I'm just gonna I'm gonna disappear here. Uh, mm -hmm. They were curious. They were uh, um, wanted to know, you know, if they wanted to override uh, the installation directory, how they could do that. And I'm actually. There we go. There we go. And yeah. so I just want to I want to go over to our, our documentation and uh, uh, do a search there. And so let's see here. Where is that? 
Uh, oh, oh, here it is, the dock. So uh, I'm just going to step on into the docks here. Um, oh, thank you. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm just going to flip that over to light mode real quick. Uh, now we're going to look for what? Install uh, override. That was it. Override, override. Uh, was it override? Uh, install directory. Directory. Ah, here we go. Install directory. Oh, there's a way to override that here too. Would you look at that? That's, uh, that looks pretty nice, doesn't it? Yeah, this actually looks really cool, Rob. Uh, what is this? Just so we all know, because this looks a little different. It does look a little different. So one of the things that we're doing at Chocolatey uh, is that we oh, come closer. Uh, is uh, you know we're starting to to really uh, work into back into the community stuff and and uh, start to kind of take our chocolate.org, which is kind of a monolith, and start to adapt that out and uh, put better solutions in place. And one of those is, uh, as you're seeing here, is the, uh, the documentation. Uh, we're moving the documentation into something that is much more usable, that is uh, quite, uh, quite good, and uh, just kind of takes you down. And we've kind of revamped uh, the way of getting to things. Now, what you will know if you do have links that come into the chocolatey.org uh, to the original location, uh, it will go ahead and redirect them um, just to show that off. Um, that way you don't have to worry about your old links getting over to the new stuff just yet. Uh, so if I just kind of, maybe if I do that, and I will, no, that wasn't it. I needed docs in front of that. Yes, you do. So if your last yeah. link was getting that, it's going to mm -hmm. bring you into the right thing. So it does do the redirection for you. Um, and so, again, we have the, the, the light mode, the dark mode. It picks what you have by uh, the natural there. And uh, we're very yeah. excited to put this dark in people's mode. <laughs> Dark mode, yes. Uh, and, I'm excited. Uh, if you want to contribute to this, uh, we do have, of course, uh, this is a open source, so chocolatey.org. Org, uh, sorry, github.com slash chocolatey slash docs. You can and scale that up a bit in. if you want, Rob. Yeah, but thank you. Yeah, yeah. That's there great. And you get in here and take a look. And it's very, um, uh, it's it's no, very very self explanatory and 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 nice and clear. And folks, we heard you. Part of the challenge with the old doc site was it was there was a lot of content up there, uh, and and it was a little hard to search through a lot of that stuff to get to where you need. Mm -hmm. And I think one of the greatest sort of secret weapons of the new doc site that I love is 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 the search box at the top. So that that search powered by um can we say who it's powered by? I think it says it right here. Yeah it says it right Algolia. there. So Algolia. Yeah. So very powerful um search uh, um so, uh, software in the back end there that's helping us out with that. So that 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 platform is is really really um what the best I've found so far in terms of trying to find um, some natural language questions up there um, will get you to the right doc really, really quickly. So really great. Yeah, it's also worth pointing out that uh, we have done some rearranging here and tried to clean house and make it more usable. Uh, is that the right word? Functional? Uh, so that you kind of dig down now. You'll notice that chocolatey CLI, that's what most of us think of when we think of chocolatey, and it's that Choco command line. Uh, but that's not the only thing that we have. Of course, we have, uh, let's see, it's a little weird. We have, of course, a GUI. Um, and then we have the, the community repository. That's where you find the packages. And what you'll see uh, is that up here, we have these global links. So we have chocolate.org. Um, we're going to have, we're going to split that uh, chocolate.org to take the community repository over to community.chocolate.org and make sure those redirects continue to work for a bit. And uh, you're going to, of course, there's the, the link that says community. Now that right now goes into uh, just that top level community page. This will be the front page of the community.chocolate.org page um, as that gets pulled apart, uh, pulled over to that. And so that that'll allow us to do is actually continue to, uh, well, uh, the term is uh, function decompose, but what it's going to give us is the ability to actually have a better, uh, better uptime, better stability, and uh, we're going to be putting a lot more improvements into this just to make sure that it continues to be usable for folks. So we're very excited about the, the things we're, we're doing there and uh, what uh, we'll uh, <laughs> be doing uh, as we, we move uh, closer to 
the end of the 12 days of chocolate is we're going to talk about a roadmap and you're going to hear that over the next 12 days or some of the things that we're doing now and some of the things that uh, we will be uh, moving to and so I know you can't see me. very cool I could so the do you want to swap back days, yeah. oh okay cool yeah no yeah, we have this ah oh, there we go hello thanks Rob thanks for that um Thanks for that uh, new launch of the doc site. That's huge. That's a big one for me, especially because I know I'm, I'm one of the guys who's always harping on the doc stuff on, on this end and, and having to work on that side. So so very cool. And I'm, I'm happy to see that we finally have some discoverable and navigable content um, for everyone. So so that, that's a really big bonus. Yeah, so um, great. Um, thank you, everybody who's been, who's been messaging in the chat and stuff. Um, um, you know, really great to hear the feedback there, um, like in real time. Um, but yeah, so, so now y'all know sort of the format with these, uh, uh, 12 days events. Um, if anybody has any questions, you know, feel free to throw them in the chat. You can see that, um, uh, you know, our folks over at chocolate are doing a dil diligent job of posting links up in the chat as well on the different platforms for the doc site and stuff. So, so feel free to engage with us in that manner. And if you have any questions for Rob or myself today on this event or the format, um, feel free to throw them in the chat as well. So I'm just going to go over a couple of logistics and, uh, and uh, for the next couple of days and sort of give you a preview on that schedule. And then and then we'll, we'll get you to that form and some of the prize stuff too. So I'll throw this up real quick here um, as well. Uh, I'm sorry, folks. I realize that if I do that, then you can't hear me. So I'll swing over back to this and I will share my screen here. Uh, where we got it. I put it up here on mine. Okay, yep, yeah, that's good, even better. All right, let's maximize over. Yeah, so talking about the 12 days of chocolatey, so you can see we have a schedule up here. So every day we're gonna have about an hour's worth of content um, and we have um, sort of a description of some of the stuff here. You can go to the uh, chocolatey.org site um, for the 12 days page and, and, and learn more about each of those individual events there. I encourage you to go there. The nice useful thing about that, that page is in addition to the events page, we also have um, um, you know, a nice link for each one to add a calendar reminder. It's really helpful to have those calendar reminders because I know we're all working from home right now and we sort of don't always have the opportunity to be away, but, but it'll be a nice little pop-up to say, hey, um, you know, um, while you're here, if you have the next hour free, come, on, come and join us on this thing. So the add to calendar links work up there. So, so pretty cool, um, um, you know, check that out for sure. And, uh, and again, um, you know, feel free to, to hop in when you can and join what you can. Um, but, uh, but yeah, um, that's pretty much it for us today, except for uh, the ever important form that I'm going to drop here in the chat. And um, you have to have registered. Daily survey. The daily survey, yes. So the daily survey um, that I'm just throwing in the chat now, you all can go and uh, connect and, and respond to this shortly. Uh, but the good news with this is um, if you have registered for the day, um, uh, like for, if you have registered for the base event and, and checked off your days, um, then all we need is your email address and some some information in this survey. Uh, you know, a couple of easy questions for you um, if you've been following along and uh, and you can take a look at those and answer those and, and uh, get, um, you know, entered into the draw to win some prizes for every day. So we'll be giving out prizes for every day. So there'll be a winner every single day for these events and uh, and you'll be able to tune in and uh, and 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 um, you know check out and 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 fill out some of those forms and then and then go from there, but yeah, that's uh, that's pretty much it for today. Rob, if you want to join from video, I just want to say a good goodbye to everybody from here. Um, oh wait, one sec. Actually, we do have some engagement here, so this is awesome. Let's do mm -hmm. this and hop in and say, is there a good intro to chocolatey? that would help me more get more of these sessions? Oh, that's a great question. Uh, you know, yeah, a great question. I, I like to say, and Rob, you can correct me if I'm wrong, we do have a, a, a feature video, um, apparently with yours truly, um, that we produced. Um, so so, so it, it walks through a lot of an introduction to what Chocolatey is, uh, as well as a lot of the feature set that's included um, in, in the Chocolatey for Business um, uh, uh, components specifically, but also highlighting some of the open source use cases as well. And you know what? Um, a great way to start also is to just join some of these sessions and watch 
and uh, and we're gonna get into a little bit of a redefinition redef or definition of chocolatey tomorrow, and that'll be a good intro for you. So I would encourage you to join tomorrow and uh, and hopefully some of the other days. And and we're gonna keep it base level and nice and easy. Um, wherever yeah. we can on the days that we have them, we will also be calling out open source and chocolatey for business um, um, features. You know, just so you have a good mix of of you know what you can do with the business version, but also if you are an open source user, you know we love our community. They're the reason why we're here. So. Yeah. So happy I would, to do. I would say like uh, the YouTube has a big set, a big playlist of all kinds of videos as well. So if you appreciate being able to see videos, of course you can go to the website and see uh, Mr. Adil. Uh, but you can also go out there and find some videos by some of our other folks on our team, and, and uh, actually even other folks that have talked about what chocolatey is. Uh, we've kind of linked those videos. So it's YouTube slash chocolatey software. Um, chocolatey software not chocolatey uh, we'll get you over to uh, that and then if you just click on playlists um, what that will show you are the different playlists you can go and so um, I think and I don't have that link up but I think up in there you have uh, one with integrations you have one with uh, kind of going through and learning about chocolatey and some other things so mm -hmm. um, we have yeah, a hopefully, uh, as we're, we're looking at this website, and we're kind of thinking about the docs and the change in that you're going to start to see more stuff that kind of goes back to the basics, um, like creating packages, like we have a, a really comprehensive doc on uh, creating packages. But it's uh, sometimes that it might be a bit much. So we're going to start kind of breaking that out into more manageable chunks for folks. Yep. Definitely the plan. In addition to that, I would say one more thing, because there's so many different ways that people like to consume content. Um, mm -hmm. I, I think an important point to mention as well, um, along with those videos, is um, we do also have the, yeah, just generally, the as you said, the docs that you people can join into. Um, but I, I would even say um, some of the other days of talks here specifically, I think I think are going to be really useful for people. So so feel free to join there for sure. We'll try and include some links um, here in the chat um, along the way too. So so feel free to to, to check that out as well. So but I mean uh, some of this easiest stuff to do um, is you know just go to the website and if you're an individual or a developer, you know just. Um, just go ahead and do the install for Chocolatey and, and start playing with some of those commands. The help is interactive and built right into the command. So it's nice and easy to use and it'll help you get your feet wet with some of this stuff. Very cool. Okay, well, so I think um, we can actually give a little bit of time back to folks uh, if that's that's cool. Uh, some might call it simple. I love that. Nice, Stevie. <laughs> um, the, um, <laughs> that's a funny comment. Um, this is the way. The, this is the way. This is the way. It's right. Yeah. So thanks so much, guys, for joining us here. Um, I will throw now up the registration. Uh, sorry, the the survey link. So the survey link is going to be thrown into here, uh, and so you can go ahead and, and um, use that survey link to um, fill out and uh, and register yourself uh, to possibly win one of those prizes. So so very cool. Um, you know, we'll be trying to have a nice little swag bag every day for, of stuff that we can give away um, to to users. So. So we're happy that you're here and we're happy uh, that you're part of the chocolate community. And hopefully you'll tune in for the next uh, 11 days as well. Business days, that is, not weekends. Um, and, and we'll be able to offer you some interesting content. And again, if you if there's anything that you want us to call out individually or questions you have ahead of time, um, <laughs> yes, I do want the survey filled out. Um, then, um, you know, generally just... Let's just, just know how we did. Yeah, let us know how we did. And also, you know, f shout out to us, any of the platforms. The Chocolatey uh, folks are very active. Our, our family is, is is very chatty on Twitter and a lot of other places. So feel free to reach out if you have any more questions or anything like that. Uh, and uh, and we look forward to seeing you for the next 12 days. Um, Rob? Sounds good. I'm excited. Yeah. Um, yeah, super stoked. Awesome. Same bat oh, time. <laughs> same bat channel. That's right. <laughs> uh, we got the, we got our fingers mixed up. I will say, um, I think uh, was it? Oh, of course, it's Corey in the chat who said we're allowed to fill out the form more than once. Um, I guess you can. It's not going to improve your chances of winning. I'll let you know that now. <laughs> okay. All right. On that note, I think we're signing off. Um, thank you so much, everyone, for joining us. Uh, for on behalf of Rob and myself, um, we'll see you tomorrow. Bye now. See you later.